It's the dead of winter, and you're watching five after midnight. May God have mercy on your soul. Number one. A few years ago, I was having some pretty bad anxiety, so I decided to go for a drive. I got on the highway, put on a playlist, and decided that I would drive as far as the music took me, then come home. I drove from Denver, Colorado to Santa Fe, New Mexico. Along the way, I came across a little town, and I wanted to stretch my legs. It was maybe 11 or 12 at night at this point, and I stopped at a rest stop at the top of a little hill, got out, had a cigarette, and talked with a guy who was also having a cigarette. He told me how he makes this trip once a year, and that I should probably not go in the bathrooms, as it felt like you were being watched in there. I thanked him for his advice, and we looked at the stars. We looked at the edge of the nearby mountain range, and then we decided to part ways. He left first, and I followed his car down the little hill and back onto the highway. Pretty soon, I did not see his tail lights anymore, but I thought nothing of it. I finally got to Santa Fe as my playlist music was ending, and decided I would turn around and head back to Denver, as I had had enough money for either gas or a hotel room. I slept on the side of the road that night, and I got back to Denver around 3 or 4 the next afternoon. I called my significant other, and she wanted to go on an adventure, and said that her friend had a place that we could stay in Albuquerque. I scooped her and her friend up, and off we went. I told them about the night before, and meeting the nice guy at the rest stop. And her friend said something to the effect of, there isn't any rest stops just after that pass. I called bullshit, and sure enough, she was right. The rest stop that I had gone to was nowhere to be seen. Not a single one along the way, tucked up on a hill the way the one that I was at was. Now every time that my girlfriend and I make that drive, the topic of the vanishing rest stop comes up. Number two. One day, myself and five or six friends were at the Las Vegas Sports Park. They had mini golf, rock climbing, and a skate park, and a concert was going on that day. We all decided to go upstairs to play some pool. So all of us squeeze into an elevator, and someone presses two. The elevator has a glass back wall so you could look at the rest of the park as you went up. I watched the park and we went up, and as the elevator stopped, I turned around to face the doors. They opened up, we all walked out, and we were dumbfounded as we looked around and found ourselves on the first floor again. Number three. When I was 12 years old, I lived in a house that had about an 8 foot tall wood door with a small window at the top. There was a screen door that you could see open and close through the window, but there was no way to see who was at the door. Additionally, you could hear the creak of the wood steps if someone was walking up the wood porch towards the door. My brother and I were at home during the early afternoon and we were sitting at the kitchen table. We hear the creak of the wood steps and we both look towards the door. We see the screen door open and stay open for about two seconds and then it was closed again. We look at each other and we go to open the door. There is no one on the porch but there is a white envelope inside the screen door. The only way to get it out was by opening the window on the screen door and wiggling the screen to get the envelope to slide down enough for us to grab it. 
This process took about five minutes, and when we opened the envelope, there was $500 of cash inside it. To this day, we have no idea how the person was able to get the envelope into the screen door so fast, and how they were able to get away without us seeing them, or who left us the money in the first place. I vividly remember my brother's seventh birthday party. It was a beautiful sunny day on my aunt's porch. Everyone was healthy and happy. My aunt had baked all these delicious pies and all the cousins were there. We had the whole thing in the backyard and the day ended when my brother blew out the candles on his cake that was shaped like Tigger from Winnie the Pooh. And then we drove home, or so I thought. About two years ago, I brought up the party to my mother, reminiscing about the fun day we had. She looked at me in confusion and adamantly said that my brother's birthday party was at home that year and he never had a birthday party at my aunt's place anyway. It never happened. Even weirder, she reminded me that my aunt was already in chemotherapy that year with no hair so she was not happy or healthy at the time. My brother said the same thing. I have no idea where the hell this day came from in my mind, and I know that it wasn't a dream, because I don't remember waking up or realizing it was fake. I always thought this was real until I asked. It bothers me to this day. My aunt died from the cancer, so I can't ask her. Number five. I was 10 years old when my cousin, who is the same age as me, went with me down to the town swimming pool. I couldn't swim at that point because I had never learned, so I stayed in the shallow end. He left me there and swam over to the deep end. For whatever reason, I decided that while he was gone, I'd conquer my fear of going underwater. So I went under, and I sat at the bottom of the pool, which was like four feet deep at that point. I looked around, and a person swam past me, and I gasped, but the water didn't hurt when I breathed it in. I was so confused that I stayed there and continued to breathe in the water. I looked around to see if anyone saw what I was doing, but no one was underwater near me. Only after I saw my cousin swimming towards me did I resurface. He was happy that I was underwater, combating my fear, but when I asked him how long he was gone, he said about 10 minutes. Then I told him I was underwater for 10 minutes. He was scared and confused, and at that point he decided it was best if we went home. It's been about 10 years since that, and I've asked him if he remembers this, and he does. So it wasn't a dream. But I never tried to replicate it for fear of drowning. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the show. If you have a story to share, send us an email, like us on Facebook, share, like, and subscribe.